Hello boys and girls, Pearl of Wisdom here from BPOW Fix. And uh, we are going to be doing another trade video. We haven't did one in a long time. It's been a long time. You, I got your letters. Everyone, where's your trade videos? What's going on? How come there's no trade videos? Last one I think I did was Demco. And we're going back to another goaltender. And the reason why, it was playoffs, boys and girls. Also, I'm a professional sports handicapper keeps me really busy making people money and uh so i kind of took away to took a break from it let the playoffs get going through and everything and let some uh, articles come in on some players that may be available in the off season that's the other reason why i didn't go that uh haven't been doing them that. i wanted to make sure that i had good information for you not just talking out of my ass Although I do enjoy doing that too. But anyways, uh yeah, Connor Hollebuck. Yes, you heard me right. It is possible that Connor Hollebuck could be available in the off season. Hard to believe. I had a difficult time believing it as well. But I'm gonna show you an article that points out something very interesting about the future of where Winnipeg's going and why Connor Hellebuck may not want to be part of where it's going. So we'll look at that. Check out all my other videos. I'm going to be doing tons of these. I might be doing a, a Marner one coming up. Woo. All right. Let's go to the article in question. It is. Connor Hellebuck won't stay through a Jets rebuild for big trade options. This is from uh, Pro Sports Daily, which uh, is kind of a new publication that I found. And I've really liked the articles and I like this specific article as well. I thought they did a really good job of capturing uh, what Connor Hellebuck said, used his own words. Didn't It was basically very factual. Uh, former Vesner Trophy winner. That miner stated that he isn't interested in a rebuild situation, noting he had more fun in five playoff games than the entire season. He wants to play with a contender, and his priority is to win a Stanley Cup. He feels he's running out of time to do that. And while he didn't say specifically that he wanted out of Winnipeg, the hints seem to be that if the Jets were tearing it down, and we're going to look at whether that's possible, which there are rumors they might do to change the trouble culture in the locker room. He wouldn't be part of the process. Okay. There's a lot to unpack with that statement. Um, I think the inch most interesting one is he had more fun playing in the last five games than he did in all the games in the regular season. Now you can say, Hey, you know, he just really likes the playoffs and that's why I said that, but people don't say that. It, it's just not something that a person would say. They say, you know, uh, we had a great regular season or we worked hard in the regular season and we got to the playoffs and went the five games in the playoffs, it was fun. Basically saying the regular season wasn't fun. That's what I get from it. Tell me in the comment section uh, what you think. He has one year left in his contract, which we'll look. Uh, he hasn't spoken about an extension uh, that he hasn't thought about it, and he'll listen to Kevin Cheveldayoff when it comes up. I don't know what their plans are. I don't know if I'm in it. Wow. He doesn't even know if they're in their plans. So he has reason to believe that it's possible that uh, they're, he's not even in the plans. Now, there has been, this is Winnipeg here now we're looking at, there has been plenty of talk about uh, there being a problem in the room in Winnipeg. Um, Paul Maurice, when he left, he uh, coached the Winnipeg Jets. When he left, he said that basically his voice wasn't being heard anymore. He said it, <clears throat> he said it very diplomatically. He quit on the team, as you might say. But I, what I got from it, a lot of people said, oh, I can't believe he quit on the team. What I got from it is it sounds like the players quit on him. 
and he couldn't seem to say anything to get it. So he said that they need a new voice. And I think the new voice came in and said basically the same thing. And that was Rick Bonus. And things were looking not too bad. But at the end of the season, when they got left got out of the when they were knocked out of the playoffs, Rick Bonus did something that Rick Bonus generally doesn't do. Coaches generally don't do. Something you don't see too often. I should have posted it up here, but you can look it up for yourself. He said that basically from February on, that team played like a bunch of bitches, pretty much. And he said it flat out and uh, straight in the public and everything. And then a little while after that, Wheeler came on and said that he wished that the coach would have kept that in the room, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to take a lucky stab here and say that he had kept that in the room for long enough. This is not something he just kind of popped up and said. This is something that they knew fully about what he felt and how he and how they were playing and how he felt they were playing. So Rick Bonus never won to try to keep a job. He 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 just does what he does and that's it. Pretty much flat out said there's something something going on with this team. It's just they're not playing and you know, a coach already quits on you. There's rumors all over the place that the character of the room is questioned. So, could there be a change? I would say there's going to be a change. Let's look at a few other things. Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, one year left on his contract. Uh, in fact, he's a restricted, no, oh, sorry, he's a restricted free agent this year. But he only has one more year, and he can be an unrestricted free agent. Plenty of talk about him going to Montreal. Tons of it, tons of it, tons of it. Now, I'm sure they're going to try to sign him. I mean, he's only 24 years old. and uh, But if he doesn't take a long-term contract, guess what? You're moving on, dude. Montreal could offer him an offer sheet and he could sign it or whatever. There's lots of things that could happen there if he really doesn't want to stay in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. And he hasn't been like outrightly saying he wants to stay in Winnipeg. It's been more like, we'll see what happens. So, Mark Shifley, questionable, his desire, his defensive work, everything has been questioned for quite some time. He's been part of this core for a long time. Um, he has a, he's going to be a free agent after next year. So, they got a question there of whether they are going to be able to resign him or not or want to or what have you. If those two players were to be moved on from, you could pretty much say this is a rebuild. And I'm pretty sure Connor Hullabuck, who also, as we mentioned, is a free agent next year, thinks the same way. Uh, you get you trade their best forwards besides Connor, Kyle Connor and, and Nikolai Ehlers. But they're two best centers, and you're probably not going to be doing all that great. Uh, So I think it's very possible that they can move on from Connor Hollabuck. Changing this core altogether, I think they probably keep Ehlers, Perfetti, uh, Connor, Kyle Connor, if they all want to stay. And they just change the leadership group of this team altogether. Blake Wheeler probably isn't going anywhere. That probably has nothing to do with whether they want to trade him. But I don't think anybody's taking that contract. So let's look at what you're getting in Connor Hullabuck. Vezina Trophy candidate. Uh, or sorry, can, one of Vezina Trophy, Trophy was up for the Vezina this year uh, and could win it, but it's not likely. It's pretty much going to Allmark. But he is one of the three candidates of the Vezina. He's putting up under very adverse conditions as Winnipeg has a terrible defense. Uh, putting up 2.49 and a .920. He, he was shelled quite a bit this year, especially in the second half as the forwards started to tire from working, uh, doing what the defense should be doing. Uh, and that's basically how Winnipeg did it. Bonus had no choice but to do it that way, and they eventually burnt out. I predicted that that would happen. That's why they were my cell team in the second half. But Connor Hellebuck kept them in all the way. And he's put up numbers. Pretty much every year he has been in the league, he has put up excellent to very good numbers. He's a stud. 
He's one of the best that there is. Uh, like I said, he's got one more year, and then he's going to need a contract. We don't know, you know, probably in the eight, uh, who knows. That'll be a problem. He's only 29 years old, though. He's basically, for goalies, almost pretty much in his prime. Much sought after he will be. There are a lot of teams looking for goaltenders and maybe even teams that think they already have a decent goaltender might go, well, I'll take a look. Like, um, I certainly would be, that's for sure. So, let's start with, I said, okay, well, wait, let's look at when, what Winnipeg might be looking for. First of all, they'd probably be looking for a goaltender in the deal if they can get it. Uh, if Dubois and Mark Shifley are heading out of town, depending on what they get back in return from them, which likely won't be the better centers than they are, as trades generally work that way, you don't usually get a better center back when you're trading a center to a team that obviously needs a center, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting what they get back in return, but if they can get a center for Hullabuck, I'm sure they would be all over that. Defense has been an issue for them for a long time. Pionk had a terrible year last year. Uh, uh, DeMello had a career year, was fantastic, and so was Morsi. Dylan is an average defenseman, and then, you know, Sandberg is just trying to get, get his feet wet in the NHL right now, and Nate Schmidt is complete, complete ass. Complete ass. So... Defensemen would be something. They could they could pretty much use just about everything. Uh, all right. And, of course, draft picks and prospects and such. Detroit Red Wings. Now, I bring up the Detroit Red Wings because um, Stevie Eisenman did come out and say he will be looking for goaltending in the offseason. Now, that being said, they just gave Ville Husso a fairly significant contract from St. Louis last year. And a moderate no-trade clause to go with it. 10-team no-trade clause. But he didn't have a spectacular year last year. And since it's a moderate no-trade clause, maybe Winnipeg's not on it. And I know it's pretty tough for Stevie Eisenman to kind of swallow his pride. Uh, however, if you can get Connor Hullabuck, swallow away, my friends. <laughs> because... Uh, I'm doing it all day. Now, I don't think that's going to be straight across. Not a freaking chance. Not a chance. And I have no idea if Winnipeg is on his no-trade list. Most people have Winnipeg on their no-trade list, so I think it's possible that that doesn't happen that way. But let's assume that he doesn't for some reason. You could go Billy Husso, Gustav Lindstrom. That would help their defense. And the problem here is you're not likely giving up a center unless it's like Michael Rasmussen. Rasmussen, Husso, and uh, and Le Gustav Lindstrom. Or first pick in the Shears draft, something like that, instead of Rasmussen. But it's going to take at least that. And that they better hope Philly Husso is... Uh, and it might even take more, to tell you the honest truth. It's really hard to gauge what goaltenders get back in return. But a guy like Hullabuck, when you're talking about one of the probably top five best goaltenders in the league, you might have to give up more than that. You might have to give up, like, throw in a Zadina or throw in another prospect on top of that. Like, um, well, you wouldn't be putting in, throwing Casper in there for sure, but uh, Tater Niederbach or something like that. Tater, Tater Niederbach is really progressing well, and I'm sure will likely be an NHLer. But it's going to take a pretty good package to bring him back. So tell me what you think, Detroit fans. Would you give up all that to have Connor Hellebuck um, over, over Huso? I would. I can tell you that right now. I... You get a Connor Hollibuck, man, just throw your chips in there and freaking take them. If you can get them, you take them. No doubt about it. Um, by the way, I, did, I do not believe Connor Hollibuck has a no-trade clause. Or does he? He does not have a no-trade clause. <clears throat> but he has, he does have leverage in the sense that he doesn't have to resign to any team that he's going to go to. So as long as he wants to go to Detroit, and Detroit's willing to pay him eight, eight and a half, maybe even more uh, down the road, 
then you know, it could be a good spot for him. All right, next, tell me in the comment section, subscribe to my channel. If you're on Facebook, search Perlo Wisdom and get in there. And if you like making money, bpalpix.com, up 420 units this year. Okay, the Carolina Hurricane. And, and by the way, these are my least likely of the seven teams I believe I have here that will make could make the uh could could make the move here for Hellebuck. Carolina I actually had higher earlier and the playoffs are still going and of course they're going to the Western Finals. So everything seems to be working out really well. Frederick Anderson is playing way better than we've seen him play for a very long time in the in the playoffs right now. And with that in mind, if you know he's looking to if he's willing to take the same amount of money that he already has has been making and he's able to keep this up, I'm guessing Carolina would be out of that out of this uh conversation for Hullabuck. They would just continue with him. But if he has an injury again, and I, you know, it's not like Frederick Anderson isn't known for having injuries again. Or if he falters here down the stretch and shows some inconsistency, because consistency has been a chore for Anderson. His, the injuries have been bothering him. Um, <coughs> injuries have affected him over and over again, whether he's actually in the net or on the side sidelines. So I think it's possible, but I do put him in the least likely category of this happening. He's also a UFA next year. So Winnipeg would not be getting a goaltender back in this scenario, unless, of course, they sign Anderson afterwards. But all that being said, let's just throw it out there and say Anderson kind of craps a bed somewhere down the road here or gets injured again like he's known to do. Would Carolina be interested in a $6 million goaltender who's going to be, need to be re-upped after next year but is a Vesna Trophy candidate? I'll tell you what. If We've seen it. If, Car if Anderson is playing well, Carolina just absolutely rocks, even without Svechnikov and Teravine. And their system is absolutely fantastic and makes goaltenders look exceptional compared to what they actually are. Um, and that's something that concerned me and the reason why I had it earlier is Anderson's uh I had Hullabuck going here earlier is because Anderson really didn't have great numbers as far as say uh say percentage he was like a 9.02 in the regular season now I know his goals against average was lower but that's more of a team play than it is a goaltender stat goal to the the the, the a goaltender stat that's not underlying, and his underlying numbers were not great. He was minus 5.4 goals, uh, goal saved above expected. So, I mean, that's not great. So that's the reason why I had it in there, but he's crushing now in the playoffs. So, let's say he goes back to it. What would they be willing to give up for? What would you have to give up for Hullabuck? Um, First of all, and I can't believe they... Yeah, it's amazing that they have done this. They do have their first in round one this year. So I'm sure that would be definitely in play. Uh, 2023 first. And I believe it would have to be something like uh, Nietzsche or something like that. The first and Nietzsche might do it. If you want to go straight prospects, and I don't think they would be able to because they got to – I think they have to send, they'll they'll have to send some money back. They're not even a full cap team. They generally in the regular season don't play to the cap. But um, I think a player like that is going to have to be part of it. Simple as that. Marty Nietzsche just needs a new contract in 2024. They obviously Teravinets will come back next year. Svechnikov will come back, and I know I love Marty Nietzsche too. But if I can get Hunter but Connor Hellebuck for it, yeah. I'll do that. Maybe throw in Jesse Pulley Harvey. Uh to see if he can work out in Winnipeg. But I think it would take something like that. The first in Nietzsche and Pulley Harvey for Hullabuck. Or you can stick with Anderson. And like I said, it very well could be. We'll see right now as I do this video. 
they are going into the Western Finals against Bobrovsky and the Florida Panthers. So we'll see how they hold up. Um, but I thought I'd throw them in there because I still think it's possible that things may not work out with them very well with Anderson. It's, it's possible. It, it's shown to be the case before, let's put it that way. Next, subscribe to my channel, Carolina fans. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. <clears throat> That's right. And you're like, we have no cap room. Forget about it. We're not doing it. You can't do it. No cap room. There's always a way, people. When you want something, when you need something, there is usually a way to get the cap to, to work one way or another. Uh, possibly, I mean, I don't think so, but possibly Winnipeg retains for next year. That's possible, but that'll even cost you more. Here's the thing about Pittsburgh and the reason why I have them lower down. I think that they would be in for sure. Tristan Jari would definitely be going back here. And uh, I think Michael Granlin, who's got a few years left, um, I think I think Winnipeg would be fairly happy with getting Granlin back in return here. Um, Tristan Jari and whatever the hell you put together to get him any way you can get them. This is a team. This is the way I look at it anyways. If they got Connor Hollebuck last year, A, they make the playoffs. B, they have a chance to actually win with this core. The core is getting older. Uh, an average goaltender is just not going to do it with what they have here all overall. Um, it's not a spectacular defense. The offense is... Good enough, but not good enough considering the goaltending has not been good or consistent for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I'd be th Drew O'Connor, Granlin, whatever, whatever you can do. Throw. Tell me what you would do. Tell me what you got to throw a ton at it. If you th the first round draft pick in twenty three, yeah, gone, gone, Granlin and o Drew O'Connor, and then cross your fingers because I I don't think that's going to be enough. I think there's going to be a lot of people out there that can, that a lot of teams out there that can beat that offer. But I'm throwing it in there because they so need it. So, so, so need that goaltending. Unless they're going to absolutely tear it down. And I doubt that very much, to tell you the honest truth. I just, they never seem to ever do that. They got Malkin for way too many years, Crosby for too many years. I mean, if you're trying to bang your head against the wall as this team gets older like this, you better have top, top-notch goaltending. And that's what it is with Hellebuck. So tell me what you think, boys and girls, down there in the comment section. If you're on Facebook, sub up to my channel and let me know. Uh, see, if you traded Granlin and O'Connor... And the first round pick, you would be okay cap wise for now. Cares about tomorrow. But the problem I have with that is I still don't think that's probably going to be enough. And you'll see that as we go through the rest of our teams here. New Jersey Devils. And I have this as the third most possible team. Um because, and I have arguments with New Jersey fans here, they still, I had, I did a Demko video a little while ago. New Jersey was right up there, and everybody's like, no, Vitek Vanacek, Vitek Vanacek, 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 Vanacek. No, Vanacek's not good enough, man. Yeah, 0.911 on one of the best neutral zone trap teams in the league last year. They play a fantastic modern progressive system there in new jersey i say pretty much as good as carolina getting there anyways if they had a hollabuck to go with that system I, I don't even know it would just be stupid like pretty much hand them the vesna next year if he actually could hollabuck playing in winnipeg with that defense it would be a dream come true it would be like him going to hockey heaven to play 
with Hughes, Hamilton, Ball, Marino, Siegenthaler. Jeez. Unbelievable. He wouldn't, I don't even think he'd know what to do with himself. Like, it, it would be nuts. So, yeah, I'm all over this. And, yeah, okay, Vanacek would likely have to go back. But, I mean, that's not going to sell too much to Winnipeg. Uh, it's, Vanacek showed his ass in the playoffs. Um, yeah, he did okay. In the, he did okay in the regular season. He's an average to below average number one goaltender. Um, but he could get better. He's only 27 years old. He's got some upside. I'm sure Winnipeg would at least give him a shot in this deal to make the money work, for one. But that sure as hell is not going to be it. You're going to be looking at guys like Alexander Holtz um, as a possible return. There's a whole bunch of free agents that Winnipeg's probably going to be trying to take from you too, like uh, Graves and Severson and all of that. I'm sure Winnipeg's going to be on the horn with all of them, or some of them anyways, trying to improve their team. But Vitek Vanacek and maybe Timu Meyer, or actually no, Jesper Bratt. Because I think they're going to sign Timo Meyer and let Brat go. Brat is a restricted free agent. He would get a fantastic opportunity in Winnipeg. They're really looking for centers and uh, more on the defense def defenseman side of things. But sometimes you got to take the best player available, and Jesper Brat would probably be the best player available. It would give Brat a really good opportunity to play top line minutes on a team where nobody's even chasing him at all. Uh, you got, he's, he's a restricted free agent. Uh, I'm not even sure New Jersey can sign him. And I would even do more than that and go the 2024 first if I had to. I, and it, it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of teams in on Hollaback. A lot of teams. Um, now, the return could be difficult based on who he's willing to sign long-term with. And that's the big thing. If he picks out like two teams that he's willing to sign long-term with, and they've only got two teams to work with, that offer may work. Same as the Pittsburgh one before this. It might work if he's Pittsburgh is one of those teams. But if he gives them carte blanche to find anyone that he has an opportunity to win a cup with, it's going to cost a lot more than that. But it's going to cost you at least that. Brat and Vanacek and possibly a, a, a second round pick or, or maybe a late 2024 first or something like that. Winnipeg's just not going to give them away. And there's no way. They're, if they're not getting solid, solid, solid return for one of the, for an elite goaltender, they'll keep them for one more year. And they'll wait till the deadline and you can try to get it then. Just wait till you see what you're giving up then. So if you want to get them right away... That's what I'll be doing. So tell me what you think, New Jersey Devils fans. If you're on Facebook, search Perlo Wisdom. That's P-E-A-R-L-O Wisdom. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section, and I'll talk to you all about it. I know there's a lot of you guys. When I did the Demco trade, when I got slammed by New Jersey, I'm like, we don't need Demco. is no good. No, 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 no. Demco is extremely good on a really bad Vancouver team. Very good. His underlying numbers have been spectacular most of the time, except for when he was injured. But Hullabuck is a freaking god. <laughs> so I'm sure you're in on it. Maybe you're not. Tell me in the comment section. Let me know. All right, LA Kings. As far as I'm concerned, the biggest reason why the Kings did not win in the playoffs was Corpusella wasn't good enough. And Phoenix Copley isn't good enough. They are an elite goaltender away from being not only a contender, but a favorite contender, I believe. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be picking up the phone if Hullabuck is available. And that's the thing, is if this gets into a bidding war, LA's got the pieces to do this. LA's got a ton of players that they can offer up. Um, 
I know for a while that Winnipeg's going to be like, by, by field, by, 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 by field, by field, by field. And I don't know if they're going to hang up on that, to tell you the honest truth. Quinton Byfield, I am not giving up on him. I think he's still going to be a fantastic player. But Connor Hullabuck, let's put it this way. You take out Quinton Byfield, you put in Connor Hullabuck. Is that a better team next year? You take out Quinton Byfield this year and put in Hullabuck instead of Corpusalo. Are you beating the Edmonton Oilers? I think you are. I think you are almost for sure. I, I think you're beating most teams with that. But let's say Byfield's completely off the table, and it could very well be that they could do it without it. It would be Gabriel Velarde, uh, probably Kupari, who really hasn't taken off here in this. You know, give him a shot. Give him a better shot. He's not really the most offensive guy in the world, or at least it hasn't developed the way they were hoping. Um I'm serious, like Tobias Bjornford. They'll be looking at somebody like that. Now, maybe not all these guys, but there's going to be these guys. I know you're going to be looking at, and probably Matt Roy. That big of a package, Matt Roy. You don't, Do you need Matt Roy now? Not really. Um, he's good, but he's not fantastic. He probably would help Winnipeg. I don't know if that would be like... I don't think they'd be clamoring for Matt Roy, but if you give them a package that's as big as that with Tobias Bjornfort, they may they may bite on that. Um, and if Hullabuck says, okay, because what's going to happen is all the GMs are going to call Hullabuck's agent and say, is he willing to sign long-term with us? And if he chooses to, he could be like, I only got two teams I'll sign long-term with. And then Winnipeg has a whole bunch of teams that either he takes as a rental, which the return isn't going to be that great, or he has to work with those teams and they have to put pressure on him saying, I'm not trading you unless it's this much or that much or what have you. But it definitely would take down the cost of getting him. Like, for instance, if giving up Byfield, I personally, uh, I'm on the. I personally would give up Byfield, and I'd hate it at the same time. I I just think Connor Hollibuck can. No, I I think Byfield's going to be an excellent center, no doubt about it. And big centers that can skate like that are very hard to find. But I think also that LA has a makeup of a team that can not be destroyed by losing Byfield when you're getting an elite, elite goaltender. An elite goaltender can change everything in an organization. So uh, I'm not saying you have to give up Byfield. It's very possible, and I would hope to hell I could find a way to do it without it. No doubt about it. And I think it's possible that you can. So tell me what you think, Kings fans. Would you give up something like Kupari? Would you give up Byfield first? Would you give up something like Kupari, Velarde, Roy, Matt Roy, and uh, first or something like that? Would you give up that big of a package for one of the best goaltenders in the league? I know I would. <laughs> Simple as that. I'm still huge on goaltending and it being uh, that much that important in the in the uh, to making the. And I know if you look at the playoffs right now, you're gonna say. Well, you know, this, there's not great goaltending out there right now. Absolutely sure. But you tell me that any one of those teams right now or before the playoffs, if they could have had Hullabuck instead of whatever goaltender they have, what you're, what do you think the answer is going to be? Like, you put Hullabuck in Carolina, forget about it. Carolina wins a cup. It'd be like huge disappointment if they did not win the cup. Put Hollabuck in New Jersey. Put Hollabuck here in Ottawa. Yeah, this is my number one team. I think they will be all over the horn. The way um, they have been aggressively building this organization and also the fact that they want to keep Alex Debrinkat. They're trying to give him a... a, a let's put it this way. If you get Hollabuck, Debrink, there's more chance that Debrinkat's going to sign. If Jabrinka doesn't sign and you don't get 
and and uh, Tabrinka doesn't sign, you have more cap space to sign Hellebuck anyways. You have $17 million in cap space. And, uh, you know, quite a few holes to fill, I suppose. But I think Ottawa is a goaltender away from being absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I like that. I like their young... I like the young kid they have, um, Mad Sogard, but uh, he does seem a little bit a ways away, certainly for to be in a playoff goaltender. If you saw with New Jersey with Schmidt, it's not easy being, or Skinner in uh, Edmonton, it's not easy being a rookie and playing in the playoffs, man. It's it's a smack in the, it smacks you in the face, what you got to do. So, this is a guy that you're getting Hullabuck that can cover up a ton of mistakes that may happen in your defensive zone. It gives your whole team more confidence. Um, he's just a beast. He's a beast. So what do we give back in return? And I think it's something like Ridley Gregg, Eric Brandstrom, and Anton Forsberg, and possibly a pick. Simple as that. I'd want Mad Sogard. I'd be pushing for Matt Silver, but I, I think they would be, you'd be hard pressed to get Matt Silver in this deal. I'm not a fan of Anton Forsberg, but if Winnipeg is really rebuilding, they don't need a stupendous goaltender anyways. I love Eric Brandstrom. I think he's one of the most underrated guys out there. I know there's a lot of you guys and I've heard you're not a big fan of Thomas Shabbat and you'd be probably willing to give up Thomas Shabbat in this deal. And I think Winnipeg, who doesn't really pay attention to analytics by the looks of it, might just bite on that, my friends. And then you'd end up getting cop top, uh, you'd, you'd end up getting a uh, cap space to go with it for now until, until uh, Hollabuck has to be resigned. Now, the good thing, Hollabuck did play in Winnipeg, so he's not afraid to play in Canada. Uh, the question would be, does he think this team is going to be playing for a cup? I think he should. I mean, you look at the talent on this team and how what they've done to fill holes and how aggressive they've been. I think he should see it that way. So, Eric Branstrom, Ridley Gregg, I think he's going to be a solid right winger. Either that or Shane Pinto. And I think they would love to have Shane Pinto as well. Who wouldn't though, right? He's 22 years old. He's still got a lot of offensive upside. He's a good two-way guy. All of those sort of things like that. Um, but I think it's going to take that kind of a package to get them at least Ottawa Senators fans. So comment in the comment section. Tell me what you'd be willing to give up for. And, you know, I don't think you're going to say, well, Alex Dabrinkat, because we can't sign him. If Alex Dabrinkat isn't going to sign in Ottawa, do you think he's going to sign in Winnipeg? I don't think so. Maybe a three-way deal could be worked out or something. There's a lot of things you could do that way. But Thomas Shabbat straight across, I wonder if they would do that. That is an interesting because they've been looking for defensemen to play there for so long now. Uh, there's a whole lot of issues that would come with that too because Thomas Shabbat has to be resigned now as well. Oh, no, he doesn't. Sorry, he's all the way to 2000. So, yeah, he's... Uh, he doesn't even have an Omuma clause. That's possible right there. Would you do that, Ottawa Senators fans? Comment in the comment section and let me know. Uh, it's funny. I, I find these deals, I find these fascinating to do these trade videos because I'm always amazed by how much people value their own players over someone else, even if they... It's obvious that it's better. The other player is better. It's hard for a lot of fans to even admit that for a second. They're just so in love with their team, and I understand that. But I don't do that. I'm a professional sports handicapper. Uh, hockey is my main sport. And uh, I make people a lot of money. So I can't be too emotionally involved in any team. That's why I like doing these trade videos, because I'm not emotionally involved in pretty much any team. My team is the Edmonton Oilers. They lost last night. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Then. Oh, well. So, yeah. That's the way I look at it. And uh, But I have fun listening to what you guys have to say. That's my full 42. Make sure to subscribe. Have a great day, everybody. Till next time when I might be doing Mitchell Marner.
Take care. Goodbye.